20, two for the green, three for methyl uh, deoxy methamphetamine. So that's my way of uh, working out my awkwardness at the beginning of presentations. All right, so today I am going to tackle the question on whether or not LSD affects cognitive flexibility. I, oh, and if so, how? I know I lured you in with the promise of talking about LSD, Ritalin, and mindfulness on cognitive flexibility, but I realized it was a little bit too much to fit into a 30-minute uh, time window, so I decided to go for the deep and narrow interpretation of the effects of LSD on cognitive flexibility. When you were younger, somebody probably told you that milk was good for you and that milk was enriched with calcium and vitamin D and that you should drink it to grow strong bones. Oh, but later on in life, you probably realized, like me, the hard way, that maybe you were allergic to milk, that you would always have bad reactions to it. And so uh, cognitive flexibility is, I mean, cognitive flexibility is the ability to uh, change your associations of, uh, of new cues. And it's required for reversal learning of previously acquired uh, behavioral habits. Uh, however, if you just get sick from milk once, you might not immediately change your reaction to milk. Uh, so rather, you might go through a trial and error phase of your life where you are drinking milk every so often, and you realize that more often than not, you're actually having a, uh, more adverse, effect, uh, adverse effects to milk than you are having uh, the beneficial effects. So uh, this ability to uh, switch between cognitive flexibility and cognitive stability is crucial for successful learning and decision making. And it's a faculty that we take for granted but uh, it's an essential skill for successful learning throughout life. Uh, uh, cognitive inflexibility can be a hallmark symptom of a variety of neuropsychiatric disorders, such as OCD, children with autism, uh, a specific subset of children with ADHD, and drug addiction. What all these drugs have in uh, common is the inability to shift or adjust their attentional focus from uh, one learned association to another. But this is not a cognitive flexibility conference. This is a conference about psychedelics. So my question today is how does LSD affect this balance between cognitive stability and cognitive flexibility? So what we know so far uh, from uh, LSD research is that, uh, uh, is from the antidotal evidence that LSD can potentially act as a nootropic. It can increase uh, creativity, possibly cognitive flexibility, and there's enhanced sensory perception. And actually, back in the 50s, uh, Jarvik did a study on the uh, dose-dependent effects of LSD on intention and concentration. It wasn't a very robust study, but what they found was that at, uh, at 50 micrograms of LSD, it didn't actually impair attention and concentration, but at a higher dose, it did. And in order to be flexible, uh, one must have uh, the ability to focus their attention and to, uh, to the changes in their environment and to be able to redirect their appropriate response to these cues. And finally, a more recent study done by uh, Robin showed that LSD actually makes subjects more prone to suggestibility. And with higher suggestibility comes the greater ease and the greater capacity to shift cognitive uh, strategies. And with this greater flexibility, you can redirect attention uh, towards or away uh, a certain type of perception. Well, we know that LSD is a uh, very promiscuous drug when it comes to acting on different types of receptors and targets uh, of most serotonin receptors along with nearly all dopamine and noradrenaline uh, receptors. Uh, and all of these uh, neurotransmitters are actually key players in cognitive flexibility. I will discuss uh, later in my presentation their specific roles. So, uh, how do you assess cognitive flexibility? I used a probabilistic reversal learning task 
and which uh, for each trial, I presented um, our subjects with certain cues that each had a different probability of receiving a reward. So for the purple cue, uh, there was a high probability of choosing reward, whereas for the uh, yellow cue, there was a low possibility. And then after 40 trials, uh, the associations uh, with these cues were reversed. I also added a third cue as a baseline cue. And by adding a third cue in the reversal phase, you can disentangle if subjects are unable to unlearn an old association or are unable to learn a new association. Uh, for the study, it was conducted at Imperial College. Thank you, guys. Uh, there was uh, 19 participants altogether. Uh, and each subject completed the PRL task twice, with a minimum of a two-week gap uh, uh, between each session. Uh, it was a randomized, balanced order, and with its subject design. Uh, the LSD was injected at a dose of 75 micrograms, or the subjects were given a placebo of 10 milligrams of saline. So my first question is, does cognitive flexibility affect, I mean, sorry, does LSD affect cognitive flexibility? Or more specifically, do people, uh, uh, tend, do people tend to stay on the same cue, rewarding cue, even after they learn that it's a negative cue? So, uh, in order for a subject to uh, implement cognitive flexibility into their real lives, they need to first have a malleable representation of information, top-down control, and also the ability to integrate uh, new concepts. This, uh, goal, uh, this goal directed behavior enables uh, people to learn the relationships between actions and outcomes. And we know thus far that serotonin 2A, dopamine uh, 1, and dopamine 2 receptors can both improve associative learning and actually also improve cognitive flexibility. So based on this hypothesis, I would postulate that LSD does have an uh, active role in, in uh, improving cognitive flexibility. So what did I assess uh, specifically? First, I looked at the number of uh, positive cues that were selected in the acquisition phase. So how uh, likely, how likely was it for a subject to successfully learn which cue had the highest probability of reward? Then in the reversal phase, I assess how often they chose the initial <laughs> rewarded cue uh, compared to the now rewarded cue. Uh, what I found was that for both groups, for both the LSD and the placebo group, uh, they both successfully learned which cue was the rewarding cue in the reversal phase, and uh, they also learned which cue was the rewarding cue in the reversal phase. So actually, uh, they, the subjects didn't perseverate at all. Uh, but however, there was no significant effect in the differences, the performance differences among these two groups. Uh, so even though there's a slight trend, uh, the LSD group actually performed slightly better uh, than the placebo group, but yeah, the difference is negligible. I also looked at the number of perseveration errors uh, in the reversal phase. So I found that um, uh, there was actually no difference in uh, their ability to uh, be flexible in the reversal phase. So to answer question one, uh, LSD actually has no significant effect on reversal learning. My second question was, uh, does LSD affect the impact of the outcomes of the immediate behavior uh, adaptations? Uh, in other words, how sensitive are the LSD subjects to immediate feedback? Uh, so how does the brain determine the necessity of cognitive flexibility? Well, first of all, you need to detect the performance error or the uh, conflicting responses. So in this case, you need to be aware that you're actually becoming allergic to milk. In the second case, you need to 
subsequently uh, implement the appropriate adjustments. And so the serotonin, uh, as we know so far from the literature, actually leads to an increase in behavioral adaptions after punishment and not after reward. So uh, I would hypothesize from here that actually LSD might increase uh, someone's sensitivity to punishment and not reward. Uh, I looked at this by uh, looking at the tendency or the probability of a subject uh, selecting the same cue after they won an award, so Wednesday, or uh, their probability or tendency of shifting cues after they received a punishment. And I found that actually for both groups, uh, they both had a higher probability, I mean, they were likely to uh, Wednesday blue shift uh, higher than trans, but there was no, I mean, there was a significant difference in the uh, probability of Wednesdaying or loose shifting. And in fact, the LSD group had a lower probability of uh, Wednesdaying loose shifting. So they were less sensitive to the reward and negative, uh, I mean, uh, outcomes. So what does this mean? Uh, for the reversal learning or uh, for cognitive flexibility, there's no difference under LSD or placebo learning in either the acquisition phase or the reversal phase. So LSD uh, affect or impair learning in either phases. Um, but further analysis shows that actually LSD does reduce one sens I mean, one's sensitivity to reward uh, uh, and uh, punishment feedback. So uh, LSD has a distinctive uh, temporal pro uh, pharmacological profile where uh, serotonin uh, receptors are activated initially and later on dopamine receptors are then activated, which can lead to two uh, distinctive behavioral profiles, at least in rats, at higher doses. But uh, the pharmacological significance in humans is still, uh, 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 has, not still been, uh, has not been researched so far. So uh, serotonin has shown us before that uh, low levels of serotonin can actually lead to increased uh, loose shift behavior, whereas dopamine tends to lead to more preservative behavior. People can't, uh, at higher levels of dopamine, uh, people are more likely to uh, be cognitively inflexible. So actually our findings tend to support the serotonin literature uh, where uh, uh, subjects are less sensitive to uh, reward or punishment outcomes. So in conclusion, uh, 75 micrograms of uh, LSD, at least intravenously, doesn't improve or impair uh, cognitive flexibility, but it does reduce the sensitivity of behavioral adaption. Uh, I would like to thank my supervisor, Sanaga. Uh, she is the main reason why I'm here today, and the Imperial College for collecting the data for me. So yes, thank you again.